What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Car Mechanic Simulator 2021. As always, if you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you leave a like in the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. In the last episode, we had just scooped up this almost pristine Audi A8 R-Line from the auction house. So, with that being said, there's not exactly a whole lot of stuff we can really do on this, and that kind of had me worried initially because how do I make an episode long enough out of this with just an A8? Well, funny enough, the devs have finally released another DLC to the game today. This one is the Range Rover DLC, so I'm super excited to check that out. But before we get to that, I do think it's probably in our best interest if we sort of address the elephant in the room and get this A8 looking pretty sick. So I've already started by finding a new selection of wheels to mount up on this thing, and these look incredible. I can't remember which Porsche they're actually off of, but they are, in fact, Porsche wheels, which is kind of fitting, albeit because, you know, this is an Audi, after all, and, and Porsche and Audi and Volkswagen, and, you know, they're all they're all one big conglomerate, basically. But the um, hood here is absolutely atrocious, so we're going to get rid of that thing. No reason to have a hood scoop on a supercharged vehicle like this. It just doesn't make much sense. As for the rest of all these body panels, I think we're just going to tear everything off and try to start as fresh as we possibly can. Obviously, the yellow is not really for me. I do like yellow. I appreciate yellow as a as a car color option for sure. But on something like this, it's just not really fitting. Just for whatever reason is not, uh, not tooting my horn, not wetting my whistle. You know, I think something like just even a metallic black would look excellent on this just because it has so much chrome trim. I mean, even the, the entire front grille is all chrome, so we need something that's going to complement that fairly well. I'm thinking black is probably the best option, but we're going to come in here real quick and see what we can repair. Actually, you know what? Let's just repair all of this because I'm not 100% sure what we're going to be keeping necessarily and uh, and what we're going to be swapping out for maybe the not-so-fancy parts. Not fancy parts, I guess. That's probably not the right uh, wording to use for that. What do they call them? Just body tuning parts, I guess. This is how we get things like the fantastic-looking hood scoop. I'm going to get rid of that abso freaking lootly, but I'm not really preferring the other taillight option over what we currently had. So I'll probably go through, do a little bit of mix of the uh, the factory stuff and the fancy parts, the, the tuning parts. I don't know what to call those. <laughs> all right, we now have all new glass surrounding the vehicle. We also have completely restored and refinished body panels on this thing. Opted in for factory taillights as well as factory headlights. The front bumper and I think the rear bumper are still the, uh, the bumper B or option B, whatever that uh, may be. And then off camera, I completely forgot to mention this, but off camera, I did go through the entire undercarriage of this vehicle and completely refreshed and restored this bad boy Billy. So if we check out the rear, for example, everything's been sort of powder coated in this nice metallic black. And then up front, similar story, though there's not as many suspension components up here. It, uh, it does still have a pretty nice finish to it. So we've still got some junk looking rims over here. So we got to yoink these things on out. I almost said yoink off and I, I think I've decided yoink off has to just be control alt deleted from my, my brain for sure. That's just not something I think I can get away with saying on here. And there we go, dude, this thing is looking so much better already though. We got to ditch this yellow, like ASAP Alapagus. I think what I want to do next is actually move the window tint toolkit over to car lifter A. We're going to go ahead and use this bad boy and we are going to go full pitch black, dude. Completely tinted out. Nobody's going to be seeing in and possibly out of this vehicle now. It is real dark. Now with that done, we're going to go ahead and move this vehicle over into the paint shop because we got to get a nice coat of metallic black. Put on this thing i i truly think this is the best color for this car if we just orbit around here i mean you got you got the chrome mirrors you got the chrome trim running down the sides you have all the chrome trim around the windows i mean chrome trim everywhere dude and especially with the wheels i think this just works just absolutely knocked it out of the park there we go oddly enough it looks like now that we painted it our tint is gone which is kind of 
kind of concerning. Maybe, maybe not. Let's go ahead and try to move it back to car lifter A. And we we may be retinting this. Oh no, never mind. Never mind. Okay. It, it's good. The lighting in the paint booth is just a little bit different. But this thing looks incredible now, dude. Let's check the car status. So we have frame condition, 65%. We're going to change that here in a moment. Interior condition, 77. So what I'm going to do for the inside, actually, let's let's go ahead and grab the welder first and first mostly. We'll go ahead and use that 1,500 credits. Good God. But that should, at the very least, fix our frame condition. Let's take a peek. 100%. There it is. All right, let's move that thing back to where she came from. And now this has to go out front. Probably doesn't matter what garage door, I suppose. But we got to just do that so we can open up the doors and make our make our lives a little bit easier when disassembling this interior. So we're going to go into disassemble mode, mark the bench, mark the two captain's chairs, the steering wheel, and we are going to get these things torn on out of here and uh, just replaced with something new. I'm really not a fan of the black and white interior. I just don't think that looked very nice so let's see if they have any other variants of it oh no they don't they don't dude or wait no 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 it's the quotes the quotes are messing it up there we go if we do bench m8 lather man there she is all right we're going brown i feel like black and brown kind of has a nice nice mix to it a nice mix to it i don't even know what that means we obviously don't know who owned this vehicle prior to us purchasing it from the auction house, but the interior is absolutely filthy. So we're gonna get this moved over to the car wash just so we can use the interior detailing kit here. I'm gonna open up this side of door. Actually, let's just open up all four doors again. We can do the, the interior out here as well. We're gonna use the detailing kit. See if this makes a lick of difference. Oh, it sure does, dude. Wow. Okay, that looks incredible. Next, we just have to switch to interior assembly mode. And we'll get our nice brown leather interior installed here. And finish her off with a wood grain steering wheel. Same thing that came out of it, of course. I feel like it's pretty fitting, though. Definitely, uh, definitely fits the Audi, for sure. And there you have it. We now have 100% frame condition, 100% interior condition, 98 percent body condition so i'm not really sure what we missed but obviously something was was overlooked there and then parts oh i think i know what it is no nope, it does have the okay thought it was going to be license plates to be honest not too worried about the global body condition for this vehicle but what we're going to have to do now is go through and drain all of these reservoirs in the engine bay because most of them could probably use changed out let's be honest now we've got every fluid done except for the oil, so we're going to drain whatever was in there before because we don't really know the condition of that stuff. And then all we have to do is lower back down, top the oil off, and I actually got a special treat for you guys. We're going to be going to a completely brand new sort of test track, if you will. It is none other than the Daytona International Speedway, made by DeadBob777. If you guys want to download this, if you're interested, it can be found on the Steam Workshop. But let's hop in the A8. Oh, wheels are not aligned. Car may drive in an odd way. Okay, let's do that first, and then we'll go to Daytona. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Daytona International Speedway, home of the Daytona 500. Wow, this thing has a lot of power and it's really loud. Oh, maybe it's not that loud. It's not that loud. We're fine. Everything's fine. Okay, we are zooming out of the pits there, going way faster than we should be. Why does this thing not? It doesn't handle at all, dude. It doesn't handle at all. Oh my god, okay. This is, this is fast. This is really, really fast. How do people do this? Oh my god, okay. Just, just trying to stay in our, in our lane, so to speak. As if we had one of those real close to the wall. Okay, there it is. Fifth gear, I guess, is, is all we got at like 178. <laughs> it's too fast. Dude, it's literally uncontrollably fast. Uncontrollably fast. And then there's that. And then that, that whole thing just happened. Oh my lord, there's a wall. We're fine. We're good. All right, we have successfully 
almost completed one lap around the Daytona International Speedway, dude. Unreal. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to come back to this place when we have like a, like a stock car or, or something that that fits here a little bit more than an A8 R line. But um, we had our fun. I think now we're ready to go check out that new DLC. The only problem now is if we want to actually see some of these DLC vehicles, we're gonna kind of have to hunt them down a little bit. We're gonna start off by going to the junkyard. If we strike out on seeing anything there. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and just head to the car auctions. And then, worst case, if we can't find a single one at either two of these locations, we're going to have to make our way to the car salon or the dealership. And uh, there they have this sort of rotating platform. We can check out just about any vehicle they have on display. So, no worries, no worries. But we're going to try the junkyard first, see what we can find here. If it ever loads, there it is. Okay, as expected, nothing. There's a GMC Vandura over there. I think this is an E-Type Jaguar, maybe? Uh, yep, Jag E-Type, alrighty. So, we're gonna just go to the car auctions now. I always forget that there's the two different sort of auction houses here. Let's start with Salvage, and then uh, if we don't find it here, or them here, then we can check out the other one. Yep, there is nothing, alrighty. Ooh. Oh, why do they do this to me? I, I literally cannot afford this vehicle, but here we have a 93 Porsche 911 Turbo S. I would honestly, I would sell the 911 RS America that we have just for the Turbo S. I like it that much more. Don't ask me why, I really can't explain it. They look identical. They just have very, very subtle differences. Very subtle differences. Dude, there isn't a single one here either. You're joking. A brand new DLC, and, and we have yet to see one of them. So, let's go to the dealership on their little spinny uh, rotating plate thingy mabob Madoohicker. Oh, they actually had Land Rovers or Range Rovers. I'm not actually sure what the difference between the two is. If you know, please let me know down in the comments. I've always wondered, but never actually had enough interest in it to just look it up myself. But they had the lore-friendly version of a Land or Range Rover, Evoke. And now, just down here, we have the actual thing, which is pretty sick, I'll be honest. But there's a 2016 Range Rover Sport SVR, the Evoke the Discovery, and then the Defender. Probably my favorite one so far. Are there any others or is it just those four? It might actually be just those four. There could be different variants of them as well that, that can't be found in the car salon. But let's go ahead and, and click on the Defender here and uh, we get to sort of configure it a little bit here and there. Not anything, you know, crazy, but we will get to pick our different colors. Oh my lord. Okay, some of these colors aren't loading. Oh no, they're all just really dark. Okay. Really feeling that teal though. That's a nice look. The silver also looks pretty solid. Oh man. But you just can't beat white. Well, you could, but that would be weird. There's even manufacturer branded rims just to go along with each model. So these are obviously for the Defender. I'm sure they have some other ones as well in here. If we just keep scrolling, eventually we'll probably see there's a Jaguar wheel. Come on, there's gotta be, gotta be a few more in here. Unless they just have the one wheel for all of the models. I mean, that, it's not unheard of. That could definitely happen. D really? Oh, there it is, there it is. Okay, so here's the Discovery wheel. And then we have the SVR and the Evoke as well. Very cool, dude. I love it. I love it. Really excited to hopefully find one of these units out in the wild. Definitely not going to be able to purchase one from here. I would imagine this thing is just insanely overpriced. How much they... 141? No. No, 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 no. I would rather get one from the, from the junkyard or even buy a salvage one from the auction house. But, uh... I think that's probably where we're going to wind down this episode at for today. But once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.